Hey guys, it is Liberty from Spirit Move Ministries, and it is Labor Day. Happy Labor Day. I'm excited to be on with you. Um, this is going to be like a four-part prophecy that I'm releasing. Um, I could probably talk for like uh, an hour on each, but I'm not going to do that because I feel like um, what God wants to say in each of these pieces, I'm just going to release all in this one word because uh this is the season for it amen and so um uh lots of festivities happening um i am down here near the lake surprisingly there's not thousands of people which i was surprised um exciting things happening here as you know our rosh hashanah event you need to go to our new website uh spiritmove.global so you can register also um we have the youth fire night in Blackwell, Oklahoma. We're gonna be doing a youth revival there. We are so excited. Um, you can see more about that on the website. Also contact us. Um, there's so many things, you guys. Um, I'm going back to Pakistan in mid-October. Yes, excited, not afraid, excited. Um, I, everywhere I go, I have, I'm have i gonna have four armed guards with me. I'm not concerned. Uh, Jesus is my protector anyway. You guys, as you know, I've been a target and I've been hit by drunk drivers and I've been hit, I've had, I've been poisoned and almost died. Um, the devil has tried everything to get rid of me and um, it just hasn't worked. So I don't think there's a greater power in Pakistan that can get rid of me. Um, I seem to just keep having lives show up from the King of Kings. Oh. See this? Vitamin water. I don't know who needs to hear this. Maybe every now and then you should drink one of these instead of a coffee. I'm just saying I'm being helpful for you. Okay. Um, you know who you are and I'm just being funny. Anyway, vitamin water or like a big smart water. Um, okay. I'm just saying. Um, so this word that the Lord gave me is very... Um, a now word, you guys, with the shaking. Don't skip it because it has to do with the shaking. I know that you guys will be like, well, you know, we already know we're in the shaking, blah, blah, blah. No, you don't understand. The Lord needs you to know what's happening during the shaking. He needs you to understand why it's happening so that you're not walking in confusion. You're not walking in fear. You're not walking in um, offense or anger. Which then, you guys, it you're not being humble when you're doing that. Then now you're becoming a reaction to the devil's schemes. That's not how we're supposed to walk. Amen. Um, God has much greater things for us to walk in than um, just focusing on our daily life and how we just drudge through that day. There, We have eternity to, to, to basically talk about. And so... These are the things that are on his heart. Now, back to Pakistan. I'm not concerned. I had a good friend of mine. I said on my last video, another apostle who has also a ministry and is very well known, um, had called because we were talking about a couple things. And, um, and he said to me, are you still going to go even with all the stuff happening? And I said, yes. I said, I'm called there. Now, if I wasn't called there, that would be dumb. I have no authority, but I began receiving prophecies over Pakistan before I was ever called there. So I knew I was called there. And so when I go there, I go there with the backing of the Holy Ghost. People get martyred every day. I don't know if I'm coming back from Pakistan. I leave knowing I don't know. But like I said, and I'm not trying to be overly sassy with it or funny, you guys, but number one, the best way to die is to die preaching the gospel. Number two is um, there's been a lot of attempts and I'm still here. So if Jesus doesn't want me to go, I ain't going nowhere. It doesn't matter what happens in Pakistan when I'm there. I'll have his protection. And those that I'm working with, we will be protected by the Holy Ghost. Okay. Um, so don't be worried about me. But yes, cover me in prayer. I want your prayer. Um, I always need prayer. Everything that we do needs to be saturated in prayer. We can do nothing without prayer. 
but I am not afraid to go and do what he's called me to do. Amen. Okay. Um, so moving along, uh, just a couple of reminders and I might say it again. So in case you skip this, you're going to hear it anyway, because I just might say it again at a very pivotal time so that you have to hear it. Okay. Um, spirit move membership. You want to get on and do the spirit move membership. And so, uh, what's awesome about that is it's a new thing that I started so that you can basically come on and it would be like you're giving, but you're not. It's like a small, um, auto payment each month <clears throat> that comes out of your mouth, out of your mouth. Sorry. I'm thinking of coughing because this cold air, if I don't have it on, I will die because I'm in Florida and, um, it's just drying my throat out. Okay. And I don't want to sit here and just keep drinking all my vitamin water while I'm talking because it just keeps having to happen. So, okay. Um, with the membership, you're going to get all the e-courses free. You're going to get, um, uh, all of our resources, PDF resources, prayers, how to anoint your house. All that stuff is included with it. It's $19.99 a month. You just set it up on auto pay like you do Spotify or Amazon and you never have to think about it. <clears throat> now let this blow your mind. If you're listening on my podcast, there's about 90,000 of you. Okay. If you're listening on YouTube, there is almost 70,000 of you. Let this blow your mind. Okay. I have probably up to about 30,000 of you that are very faithful that watch every word I release. Some of you, I get way more views than even subscribers that I have. Now, if the 20 or 30,000 of you that are extremely faithful, if you did the membership, calculate the funds that that provides. That $19.99 a month, which is nothing for you to have disappear every month, like any other thing that you do on auto pay. And then that comes in and it covers the ministry's overhead and it allows us to do everything he's called us to do. Now, do the math. If just a thousand of you, you guys, way more than a thousand of you watch my videos and follow my ministry and follow me on all the other social media and listen to my podcast. If you got on and did the membership, uh, even though you probably give in other ways, donations once a month and you're partnered and all that, that's great. But if just all the thousands of you would be faithful to the one thing and then you receive all the free benefits um, that I give out that are not free to the public, you would have to go to my store and buy those items. And so they're going to be fruit made free to you with all the access you want. You can use them. You can do small groups in your house. You can, um, you can do it, share it with a friend, whatever. And so it gives you access to all the stuff. Okay. You want to do the spirit move membership, go to spiritmove.global and go to the membership page and you will see it there and you can register for all that. Okay. Okay. So here's the four words. Um, the word that I'm about to release is the fakes will be swallowed up. The fakes will be swallowed up. F A K E S. Okay. Fakes, fake people, fake ministries, fake apostles, fake evangelists, fake prophets. Okay. Fake, fake, fake. They're going to be swallowed up and we need to prepare for these four things that God's doing in this next season. I believe September is helping usher it in. Yes. We've already been through a lot of cleansing. Yes. We've been through all kinds of stuff that he's doing. Um, it's been massive since 2020, amen. And um, I recognize that, many of you recognize that, that it's been massive since 2020 um, on a whole nother level. But amen, it's gotta happen, you guys. God is not coming back for a remnant with a little poop and their brownies, okay? Just one little tiny speck of poop mixed into the brownie mix ruins the whole batch. So he's not coming back for a remnant with a little bit of poop. It's not happening. And so all this stuff has to happen and it's not just to cleanse us, but it's to make us unshakable. So the fakes will be swallowed up. This is what the Lord said. And he brought me and this, I'm going to just walk you through these four words. Okay. So just listen and track with me, you guys. 
because it's basically four prophecies in one that you're getting on this one video, okay? Um, Exodus 7, 11 through 12 says, but Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. So the, so the musicians, um, all the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up all their rods. Amen. And so the Lord said, this is what we're coming into is where what's real is going to swallow up what's fake. And we don't always like that. It, honestly, I'll, I'll just tell you, it breaks our hearts. When we find out that someone is not who we thought they were, and they claim to be a mighty man or woman of God, and they get exposed, it breaks our hearts. We People can become disillusioned. They can become fearful. And um, you have to understand it's a part of the shaking. And so the Lord had me read these verses, and this is what he said. The Lord said, the devil will send many fakes in the season ahead. People and leaders who look and act like they're going to do good, but God's spirit and will will swallow up what's fake in the body of Christ. Um, and while in, in the body of Christ, um, first, then the world, which is Egypt, these fakes that are deceiving the nations and deceiving people with their counterfeit power will be swallowed up. Trust me, my people, the deception will only last a season. Um, last for a season. All this must take place to prepare the harvest. When the real swallows up the counterfeit, many will see the, the light of Christ and many will run to Christ. They will know that he is the one true real God. Amen. And so this is what God's trying to do is to basically remove what's not real. Amen. And to uh, help us to deal with understanding what's real and what's not. He doesn't want us continuing to live in deception. You guys, that's not what he has for his final remnant is to live in deception. And so um, if we don't know what's real, then we are going to be swallowed up in the fake. And so he's going to go through dramatic lengths to remove the wheat from the tares because we have to know the difference. And I'm not going to get into you on all the theology on that. Man, I had so much people, so many people manifesting when I released the word about the, the, the separation of the wheat and the tares, that the separation has begun. I released it in 2020. And um, people were like, no, the tares are like the evil people. I said, no, they're not. Jesus was very clear. The tares were growing among the wheat. How are they growing among the wheat? Because they're in the same building, same church, pretending to be holy, but they're not. And they're not for what Christ is for. Amen. They're growing among the wheat. So it is people in church. It is people who already claim to be saved. Um, so there's your answer to that in case you wanted to manifest about my comment. Okay. And I already had it happen. Okay. So I'm not going to go in really deep on each of these. Um, other than I will tell you, when you see that happen, it is not it is not easy, you guys. And I will say this, God needs you to roll with it. And you're probably thinking, wow, you know, how do we just roll with it? No, we, for real. We have to embrace what he's doing. We have to pray for those that are being exposed. And we have to keep our eyes straight like this on what he's called us to do without looking around. Because if we look over here, we look over there, we're going to get all distracted. And then we can fall into the group of people that are disillusioned and deceived in the end times. We want to be the remnant. We don't want to be the ones wandering around like zombies, acting all like, oh no, woe is me. Uh, So-and-so isn't who I thought they were. Here's the thing. I'm not saying be cold and uncompassionate. There's not time um, for us to sit around dwelling on those who became a terror and we can't control it. You guys, 
they have to choose Christ. They have to be choosing to be holy behind closed doors. They have to be choosing to be making wise decisions behind closed doors. If they're not, eventually all things are going to fall apart. And it's going to be made known that they're not pure behind the scenes. Now, it, impurity can come in many ways. It could be just pride. It could be whatever. It, it can come in different ways, you guys. A lack of humility. It's not always like some big old sin that needs to be exposed on the front page of the paper. But the Lord says the fakes are being swallowed up the same way that Aaron's rod swallowed up the fakes. His body is that's going to rise in purity his remnant are going to swallow up the fakes. That means those who are truly not of him are not going to be, they're going to be made known and nobody's going to be falling for the schemes anymore. Amen. And the witchcraft usually involved with it. And the witchcraft gets released in not just straight up Jezebel where you know that's what it is. Sometimes it is religion. It's the spirit of intimidation where that comes in and it's on somebody and they think they're going to intimidate their leaders. They think that they're going to get them to slow down or quit or whatever, um, or to feel like they're failing. There's always room for conviction and there's always room for correction. He corrects those he loves. But on the other hand, if you, if you succumb to the being disillusioned by other people being exposed or being swallowed up as a fake and you can't handle the information, God is not I, 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 you guys already know I'm in your face. God is not coming back for a remnant that cannot handle the information. That can't handle the truth. That can't handle what's real. That can't handle what God is actually saying. And then lay that out to the people without fear. Not in anger, not in frustration, not in offense. But out of the love of Christ being real. About the devil and about the truth of the cross. And so sometimes we have to be in, in your face with it. And it's not always the most prettiest thing. And I will tell you, um, I had a friend of mine at the Tampa, Corey Russell, um, at the Tampa Bay Revival. We did, that was the last event we did together. And um, he spoke a word over me and he basically said, Liberty, don't ever stop being you. Always be the real Liberty with the prophetic, my, the prophetic gifting, the intercession, um, everything that I do and how I release, he said, never stop being you. Um, never stop being real and, and being who God's really called you to be the real Liberty. He said, don't ever stop because the world needs a real Liberty, more real liberties. But he said, he, the world needs you to be who God's called you to be. You're real. And you, you don't hold back. And so I was like, whoa, you know, when he released that word over me, because I get attacked a lot for being real and for being straight up. And so, um, when he said that to me, it was such a blessing. And it was like, the Lord was like, Liberty, I created you this way for a reason. Don't ever feel bad for being you. Don't ever feel bad for calling out sin. Don't ever feel bad for exposing Jezebel. Don't ever feel bad for, for, uh, recognizing an Absalom and dealing with them. Don't ever feel bad for not, in, not allowing demons to reside in your house and so, or in your ministry. And so God doesn't want to have any of that happening either in his kingdom, in his body. He doesn't want there to be a bunch of fake stuff. Okay. So, um, Prophecy number two. This is the next part, okay? We just read in Exodus. This is continuing on in Exodus, but on a different chapter. Then the Lord had me read Exodus 19, 3 through 6. The Lord said he's going to bore us on eagles' wings, just as he did for Israel as he carried them out of captivity and into the wilderness. The Lord said if his remnant, this uh, true body, will obey his voice um, and our covenant with him, stay and keep our walk, um, our walk in him, we will be a special treasure among all others. We will be his priests, a holy nation. The Lord said, my people will never be ashamed of obeying me. I will carry them through 
I will be their back as they obey me in every area. Now, Exodus 19, 10 through 11, this is what it says. And Moses went up to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain saying, thus, you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell um, the children of Israel, you have seen um, what you have seen with and what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will heed and obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So the Lord basically was saying, um, If we are obedient and we allow him to do what he needs to do during the shaking, we allow him to remove the fakes, um, expose the real, remove the counterfeit. So we stop living in the counterfeit, listening to the counterfeit, following the counterfeit, participating with the counterfeit. He needs to cleanse us of the counterfeit. We need, he needs to get it away from us. We need to not partner with it. And if we're obedient to that and we trust his ways, we are his special treasure. He's going to, he's going to bore us on eagle's wings. He's going to carry us through the shaking to the next level, next step. If we trust him, amen. The same way that he had, um, uh, spoken these promises through Moses to God's people. Hey, if you obey me in every area, I will have your back. I will carry you to your next location. You'll have nothing to fear, my people. You will have nothing to fear. And so that is promises for us. And so he said, it's an actual picture of, the, of what's happening in the shaking. If we're obedient and we trust him, he's going to bore us on, on um, eagle's wings and he's going to move us to our next location and he's going to carry us. Amen. The same way that he carried the Israelites. And so... The third word was Revelations, was, uh, he had me read Ve Revelations 2, 2 through 5. I know your works, your labor, your patience. Some of you already know these verses. You're going to be like, yep, I already know what she's about to say. And you have tested those. Okay, let me start over. Revelations 2, 2 through 5. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles, this is big, and are not, and have found them out to be liars. And you have preserved and have had patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, nevertheless, you guys, nevertheless, okay? Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from there you have fallen, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works or else I will have to come quickly and remove your lampstand unless you repent. I will have to come and remove it from its place unless you repent. And so the Lord said, um, this is, this is all about my, the body of Christ and the shaking. It is to bring us back to our first love. The first love fire is what's necessary to carry the load. You need to hear his heart right now, you guys. I hope you're watching this whole word. Watch the entire word because it's four words in one, four prophecies in one. Um, the end, blah, 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 let me start over. The Lord said, this is about the body of Christ. The shaking is to bring us back to our first love. The first love fire is what is going to be necessary to carry the load of bringing in the end time harvest. Um, the first love fire is what must be passed on to the new converts. Hear this, you guys. Not religion or man-made ministry, but the fire of a saved soul. The first love fire will help a new convert catch the vision for their life and call and run with the glory. And so basically, um, you guys have to understand, he, 
If we're not carriers of it, we can't pass it on to those who get saved. If we're not walking in the fire, we can't pass it to those that are getting newly saved. They need that fire, you guys. They are going to literally be the, the youngest of the end time army. They're going to be the Gen Z's of the end times. And they're, those, they're going to be the ones in their 40s finalizing the whole deal, you guys. I'm not giving timelines. Track with me. I believe it's in my lifetime. And so I don't think it's 100 years from now. I don't believe that at all. It's too close. And I know that it's too close. And so um, basically, that whoever the new converts are, those that newly get saved, all these, the billion soul harvest that we bring in, we have to be able to pass on the fire. If we have not been consecrated, we have not been obedient, we are not unshakable, we are not doing all the things we need to do so we can be on fire, how can we teach them to be on fire? And so it all lines up, you guys. He has to remove the fakes so that the true can arise and we can become more in unity, more pure, and more bold to do what we've been called to do. Amen. And so he has to swallow up um, all the fakes. Uh, then he needs us to accept what's happening and be obedient. Then he needs us to, to not just be so obedient we forget our first love. We must stay in that place of that first love fire. And I will tell you this. I got radically saved at 17 and I've never left that place. I'm more in love with Jesus than I ever even was that day. I've become even worse of a psycho for Jesus. And so, and I'd bring people with me to be psycho together. Like I've went to whole nother levels, you guys. So the thing is, is if you don't keep that first love, then you're not you can't pass that on to someone else. If you're not in the first love, you can't pass that to someone else. And so everything God's doing are steps during the shaking so that his remnant can properly bring in the harvest and then know what to do with them, raise them up, release the fire into them so they can catch the vision. They can catch the call. They can catch the fire and they can go be crazy for Jesus and give their whole lives over to it. Only first love fire can do that. And so the Lord says, um, woo, man, I could feel the glory. Um, you've stayed away from evil people. You've tried to make good choices. You've done this, this, and this, but you've left your first love. So come back to me because that first love where you get up every morning and you can't wait to spend time with him. He's first, not anything else. You get up in the morning and you're like, you cannot wait to go sit with him for an hour or two hours or three hours and just be in his presence and read the word and 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 worship and pray in the spirit. If, if you don't do that anymore, you need deliverance because you've left your first love. I go to sleep thinking about Jesus. I wake up and I can't wait to go sit with him. Man, I can feel the glory. Um, we can't lose that. We can't pass that on to someone if we don't have it. And if you don't have it and you're a major leader, you need to check yourself and you need to get yourself back in order. Because without that, you're not going to make it either. You're going to be burnt out with bloodshot eyes. You're going to be fried and tired. You're going to get offended at everything. You're going to be get angry. Everything's going to be a thing. You're not going to be able to handle nothing. That is not what God has for you. If you're considered a major leader, a global leader on the earth, stay in your first love and you will have everything you need to keep going. It will, it will keep you going. You'll never be tired. You'll never get burned out. You'll have everything you need to pour into the next group of unsaved people that get brought in and get saved. Amen. And so it's very, very, very important. Okay. Um, number four, are you guys ready? And I'm going to be getting ready to close up miraculously. I got through four prophecies in one video. You guys should be like applauding and like 
making a cheer or something. Okay. Um, number four, Exodus 19, 13 through 14. Um, not a hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned or shot with an arrow. Whether man or beast, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come near the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to tell the people and um, to, went down to the mountain to the people and sanctified the people and washed their clothes. Uh-huh. Yep. They're not coming into the glory without their clothes washed. Amen. Without getting cleansed first. The Lord said this is... Um, uh, his people couldn't enter the fire, the glory on the mountain until the trumpet sounded. They had to be ready to possess the land. They had to be purified first, lest they die. They had, um, this is a spiritual picture of what God is doing with his body during the shaking. He needs us to be ready to be in the fire, um, in the fire and the presence before he can use us to save people during the end time harvest. If we can't handle the fire and the consecration, how can we lead other people into the beautiful fire of consecration that we have to walk in to actually be the end time army? Okay. Just as they blew, um, they blow the trumpet to let them know they were ready. God's doing that. The trumpet will not sound the end times trumpet until God's people are ready, washed, and sanctified to do the job. So as I said in one of my last words, if my people who are called by my name will get ready, you will get holy, you will figure out and recognize if you're not on fire, and you will get on fire. We're watching an outline play out, you guys. Um, and there, there's so much more that I could say, but I'm going to end it with this beautiful Labor Day um, word for you. The fakes are being swallowed up. And so the Lord needs us to be able to recognize the counterfeit, allow him to remove it, them and embrace it. I know this sounds morbid, but with joy. And press on. Because if we get our, our, our off of focus, off of what he's told us to do, because we're getting in the middle of all this stuff and then we're getting disillusioned and we're confused and we're angry, blah, blah, blah. It's the spirit of delay. It's all to waste your time so you don't move forward. It's all a lie. Don't let it happen, you guys. Look forward. Keep your eye on the goal and the prize, which is only found in Christ. Amen. And so the fakes have got to go. And as we allow that and we obey, he is going to carry us on eagle's wings to our next location. We don't have to fear. The glory is going to carry us. We're going to have everything we need. He's going to have our back. And then as he has our back and we're obedient and we're recognizing everything and we're getting busy with the glory, we can't get away from our first love. We have to stay in that place of first love fire. You guys, I have never left it. And this is what an annoys people about me. I'll be real with you. People cannot handle me for very long. Um, you can hear all the things that they, this is, this is things I've been accused of like they're bad. Um, it's just too much Jesus. Like it's just, everything's all about God in her life. Like life can, just can't be that way. She expects too much. She actually actually expects us. This is when I was a church planner. She actually expects us to show up like every time we're supposed to serve. And um, that's just not logical. If you sign up and you volunteer and it's going to be your thing, you need to show up. And so the thing is, is... Um, People, I was constantly a target. I'm happy to be a target because I'm not going to quit being on fire. I'm not going to quit doing what I do and rolling and going with the glory because other people don't really want to give 100% to God. They don't really want to be on, on fire. They don't want Jesus to be the Lord of their life. And see, I've had the intimidating spirit work through people to try to get me to be subdued. It's what I call... When the spirit of intimidation works through people to subdue somebody, 
and that is to make your fire calm down. You know, do you really got to be this much on fire? Like, um, I can see going to church on Sundays. I'm faithful to that. But, you know, like everything is not about God. Yeah, it is. Because you're going to find out real quick, you ain't in the end time army and you're going to hell. Because you ain't, you're not going to make it if everything ain't about Jesus. What are you saying to those people over in the countries that are being martyred? Voice of the martyrs right now. They're dying for Jesus. They're giving their whole life to it. They are the offering. They're not giving a hundred bucks offering. They are the sacrifice. And they die every day going into countries that they will go to prison or get murdered for preaching the gospel. So don't tell me this American church, these American Christians, you guys get it together. That's not real Christianity. Real Christianity, you give your life to it. If you're never available to serve God, but you think you're cool because you show up to church once a week, you're not, you're not. A true follower follows. And so, and this is not to get be in your face and give a correction. Maybe you need to hear it, you know, but I only say what the Lord leads me to say and what's necessary. But this is why the shaking has to happen. So I say all, all that to help you understand. That's why the shaking has to happen, you guys. It has to. Because you're not going to be ready. And the same way the spirit of intimidation would work through people to get me to feel bad for being on fire. You just got to calm down. You're just like, you're just like too big of a Jesus freak. You want us to do what? You want us to like um, commit to something? Oh, you mean we can't call you every other day and be like, um, we went out of town for the weekend. Sorry, we're just not going to show up. But they were supposed to be volunteering and covering like four things. And so I'm real with, with it's all hands on deck, y'all. We ain't playing. Um, my sons will tell you. Uh, they've done worship. They play instruments, all that, even when they're sick. They don't stay home. My son would, would play guitar and do worship with a broken arm. He did it twice. He broke his arm twice because he didn't learn the first time. But that's beside the point. The thing is, he sat up there on the stool and I even told him he don't have to do that. I was like, you, you need to heal. And he was like, nope. And so he refused to sit out and his arm was broken and he still played guitar for the worship team. He sat on a stool. And so... Um, that's kind of how it rolled in my household. So, um, people can't handle me. And so you need to understand, but that's the Christians that God is raising up for the end time remnant. You guys, Smith Wigglesworth would go out there and preach, man, I can feel the glory would go out there and preach and, um, minister to hundreds and hundreds of people and release the fire and, and, legs were growing back and cancer was was falling off people's bodies and babies were being brought back to life all this amazing stuff was happening the whole time he had kidney stones and was very sick but he would go and spend hours doing that and then he would go back to to his house or his hotel or wherever and lay in the bed in horrible pain because he was sick or he had something wrong with him he didn't not serve God because he didn't feel well that day. And so I'm not saying um, you can't be sick or you can't get attacked with COVID and need to try to recover. I understand all of that. I'm not saying um, you have to be totally invincible, but I'm pretty sure the body of Christ that is going to be the remnant is going to have to be invincible, you guys. You're going to have to not let anything hold you back. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing can hold you back. Nothing can make you quit. It doesn't matter what's happening. It doesn't matter. And so like, um, you're probably thinking, man, that's just terrible. You know, uh, you know, with your sons, man, they have to like do stuff sick. Yeah. Because the thing is, if you're the drummer, you're the drummer. There is no other drummer possibly. 
So you're going to drink a seven up. You're going to eat some crackers and you're going to go play the drums. And so you're probably thinking that is mean and wretched. No, it's not. And if it was so mean and wretched, then my other son would not have agreed on his own without even, I didn't ask him to play drums with a broke or uh, play guitar with a broken arm. He refused to quit. He was like, I ain't sitting out. I'm going to make it happen. Give me some ibuprofen. And I'm like, okay. So here's the thing. That is the remnant. That's the remnant. Bold as a lion. As humble and loving when it comes to the new converts, bringing them in, um, accepting them, loving them into their faith, that's the lamb. But there's a boldness of the lion of Judah that we have to release and we have to be able to carry it. We cannot be shakable. That's not the end time remnant, you guys. And so all these things that God, I just outlined for you the four different uh, prophecies that he gave me, the fakes are being removed, you guys. He needs us to be everything he's called us to be. And um, he will bear us on eagle's wings. He will cover us. Um, but we have to be cleansed. We can't be used if our clothes are not clean. He, Moses told the people, man, we got to get you sanctified. We got to wash your clothes. We need to get you ready because man, lest you're going to die when the glory touches you because the glory, no likey, likey the devil. So, um, that's when manifesting happens in, in services. Like in my services, the glory is so thick. People start manifesting because what they carried in, they didn't even know was there, but man, the, the demons get really annoyed really quick with the thick glory. As soon as the Shekinah glory shows up, they start spazzing out and they start leaping and freaking out and screaming through people and all this. It's the real deal, you guys. God doesn't want his remnant to be so shakable that they're one of the ones manifesting the demons when the glory comes. We have to be bold as lions. We have to be able to carry it to a dying world. The remnant is not supposed to be the ones trying to get saved, trying to be delivered. Man, I still got demons I got to get rid of. Yes, you're probably going to, deliverance is lifelong. Keeping doors closed can be lifelong as a Christian. If you don't pay attention, you got to stay aware because man, the devil will keep trying to find ways in. You guys know that. And so like the word I released yesterday in writing and, and through mass email, you need to go on Facebook and you need to read it because it's a deliverance word. And man, that brought out some serious manifesting. We had unsafe people who were not too pleased with me saying that um, certain things on the list were demonic and they needed deliverance from those things. Um, they were slightly manifesting and very offended that I called, go back and, and, and see what I posted. It was for deliverance. And so um, and to the point where they started bombing Spirit Moves messaging board through the, through Facebook, um, all these hate comments about, you know, because they're not a believer and they don't think like, you know, and you'll see all the demons, the different forms of the demon of demons of lust that I wrote. They were not happy with what I put. And so we had an all out assault yesterday. It was it was very fun and hilarious, you guys. Um, I love, really love annoying demons. It's like the most funnest thing. And, um, who wouldn't want to do that? Amen. Who wouldn't want to do that? And so, um, but God needs us to be ready. We need to be holy. We need to be washed ourselves. We need to be delivered. Um, the counterfeit has got to go. We've got to stop living and partnering with counterfeit because then we're not clean. So this is why all the separation, all the stuff you're seeing happen, it's it's a must, you guys. Let God do it. Don't cry about it. Don't whine about it. Don't be confused. It's supposed to happen. Calm down for a minute. Let him do the work. He'll give you your footing back. And then you're going to have your footing on a new foundation that's created by him full of holiness and purity. 
But it starts with you letting him do it and not being offended by it, not being offended at the people that the demons are working through. It's, that's not going to help you. It's going to delay and it's going to hinder the whole thing and it's going to make you become who you're not. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. Amen. Okay. I love you guys. Um, as I said, do the Spirit Move membership. Well, uh, once again, let me let this blow your mind. If all of my subscribers gave $1 a month, we would have more than enough to cover all of our overhead and then probably do two major events each month. Let that blow your mind. One dollar. If each of you gave one dollar. But if you go back and watch my wealth video, you'll see, statistically speaking, 10% of the body of Christ funds 90% of it. Everybody doesn't give. But see, that's not the remnant either that God's coming back for. You're going to have to not be addicted to mammon and you're going to have to trust God with your money so you can be blessed and be used for his kingdom. Amen. Um, I love you guys. And um, Lord, I just pray over each of us that we will let you do what you need to do. God, remove the counterfeit from our lives. Uh, whatever's not of you, remove it, Lord. Remove it. Whatever you're not okay with, whatever Ishmael's we've brought in, forgive us, Lord, for Ishmael ministries, Ishmael marriages, Ishmael, 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 anything. Forgive us, Lord, that we did that and we didn't, we didn't receive the real, but we chose the counterfeit um, that is flesh and man-made. Lord, forgive us. We give up the counterfeit. We say, take it. Give us clear vision of what's true and real so we can move forward in victory. Lord, we declare we will be obedient and that you're going to carry us on eagle's wings. We can trust you with that, Lord. And we declare, Lord, that as we're obedient, um, and we're giving it all to you and we're working, Lord. We're not going to forget our first love. We're not going to stop serving you first. We're not going to sit before you every morning and, and read your word and sit in your presence and worship and pray in the spirit. Uh, we're not going to give that up, Lord, to go do something else instead of that. Lord, we will be obedient. We will give you everything, but we will make sure that the first love fire never leaves so that we could be an example and we can run with the glory. And Lord, we say, make us ready for the trumpet. Woo! Man, I can feel the glory. Make us ready for the trumpet sound, Lord. Clean our clothes. Sanctify us so we can approach your holy mountain. We want to be approachable to you, Lord. Man, the glory is so strong, you guys. I'm sure you can feel it. Wash us up, Lord. Sanctify us. So we're ready for the trumpet. We want to be ready when the trumpet sounds. Amen and amen. Okay, I love you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed these four words, prophecies in one. I hope it, it blessed you. Um, remember, Spirit Move membership. You get the you get the e-courses, you get PDF resources, you get extra content from me. You get all kinds of free stuff that everybody doesn't get and you can just set it up on auto pay. And that those funds come into the ministry to help us run our regular overhead. And then you can give donations through Tithely to Pakistan, um to any uh the fire nights, we're still raising funds for that. I still have to raise about $75,000 for Pakistan. Um so you can go through Tithely and give for Pakistan. Um, I go in mid-October, so I have until then to have the seventy-five, the rest of the 75000 So I know God's faithful, and I'm not worried about it. God's on the move, amen, and the waves are upon us, the storms are upon us, but it's for our good. I love you guys. Have an amazing Labor Day, and I will talk to you probably in a couple of days. Amen and amen.